Hello, everyone. Welcome to One Million Mind. Hello, Balaji. How are you today? Hey, Rajni. It's been a crazy week last week. I was at the Scale Conference here in Pasadena. We were doing a summit for a nonprofit called Kwai. So it has been exciting last week, and I'm just carrying some of the energy from last week. That's awesome. Yeah, conferences, some of the conferences are very, very tiring. But it sounds like based on what I heard from you, it's a lot of learning, a lot of, uh, you know, like people, right? People like us who are excited about the technology, they're playing around with is always nice to rub shoulders with them. So that's great. Yeah, it was exciting. Hugely know. developer conference, right? So I'm a, a engineer slash developer, right? That's how I started. So it's all exciting to talk to these people, what they're thinking. So it was fun. Perfect. I know there's been a lot going on, uh, so I want to cover uh, some of these topics at NVIDIA conference or NVIDIA announcements where some of the conversations is going on. I'll talk about at a high level what I understood from that conference or at least from the keynote. I didn't listen to every minute of it, but it was some great news coming out of it. The biggest news was the um, B200, which is a bigger, faster, and more efficient GPU than a H100. But the cost is about $40,000 each. So I'll leave it at that. But let's talk a little bit more about that. And then, I, of course, I did a read about the humanoid robot uh, project that NVIDIA was doing, the microservices platform. And uh, I know the CEO, Jensen, has been giving a lot of uh, interviews about it. So let's just talk about it. What was your key takeaway from the keynote? Do you have any sense for uh, some of the microservices platform? Just just your reaction to what, you, how all the announcements, there's a bunch of announcements, right? So let's talk. Yeah, about absolutely. I think I was focusing more on the, on the, uh, the NVIDIA inference microservice and related architecture that they were sharing, not necessarily on the robot side of things, right? And, and how this, this all shaping up to be NVIDIA servicing the bigger enterprises with because there's this camp where larger the better, more data the better. So this is addressing their problem, right? And and I'm also involved personally in a nonprofit where how can you personal run a personal AI? So I'm kind of divided between the two camps. So I'll talk to the first one. So in the in the larger the better camp, I think this is all great news for them, right? It, it, they get more uh, parallel processing, more um, compute in a smaller footprint, and they can run data centers. Uh, uh, to service the bigger demand that they see coming up, right? Um, so in that aspect, it's and, and another thing I was really excited about was how the industry sees all the open source effort because it seems to be consolidating around the same type of models that people have been talking mm -hmm. about or building in the open source side. Of. So this is all exciting to see everything converging to some uh, effect in the same same way. So that's my takeaway. Agree, and I. I mean, if you are a NVIDIA stockholder, right? If this 40, what I'm saying is they are building bigger, better chips and more expensive ones, right? There's already already a big backlog of uh, the H100's demand. If this comes in, the, I know GPT-5 might be coming out in a few months or well within the next year. So we're getting better LLMs, even uh, these might be a few um, quarters away, but just the sheer, power of what things can we are seeing right now we we keep talking about it the two of us have talked about how we are right in the beginning phases this is going to get exponentially better and the hardware side is moving in the same pace as the llms are moving in the same pace i can't i can't even fathom things that we haven't even thought about that's going to be feasible right yeah one of the uh, things i i don't know whether i have image he was sharing a hockey stick graph of how the the, the Moore's law is getting broken into now it's uh, we are achieving things that the other law predicted in a shorter time frame right um so I think uh, when it comes to compute it's a different type of compute again when you say CPU versus GPU each one is one is a general one is a very specific uh, type of a uh, uh, chip um so a lot of things are coming to play where the acceleration is here right it's gonna uh, it's go the, the demand is going to hopefully show up and they can service the, with this kind of a, a design. So we'll see. Okay, let's deep dive a little bit more into those uh, microservices. I want to, I know you have something uh, prepared for us to. Yeah, so be great. I'll share. So one of the uh, concepts they were introducing is, is something called the NVIDIA 
inference microservice. Um, stepping back at what we have been working on for the last year or so, you saw this thing evolve, right? First, the large language model showed up, and then people who had GPUs can run it. And then came, OK, now I can run it on CPU. Now I can run it on GPU. But then the problem uh, around, can I run it as a single unit of work, right? Because there is an inference job. In the majority of the architecture, uh, there is a core component, which is called uh, uh, inference. So you send a prompt in, and it spits out something, right? And it infers from the knowledge base it has learned uh, as something uh, that you can use in a, in a natural language uh, way right that's most of the use case. that's uh yeah the chat gpt is a good example right you send in a prompt it goes in first from the model and so how can you create microservices uh from this and how can you use the the nvidia chip to so that's that's how this is shaping up um let's go a little deeper into what does this uh, breakdown look like um so essentially um they are talking about industry standard APIs, how can I? So in other words, open source, there's individual components. We all know who our work with open source, we know we are dealing with individual components, putting it together, optimizing it, making sure everything works together as a single piece and fast and without losing uh, efficiency, right? And I think that's the task uh, that this kind of achieves, right? When, uh, when a company like NVIDIA focuses on this and a bunch of others, so they're trying to put together the most efficient way all the pieces of the puzzle that can help you infer, right? Um, and that's basically it. I think um, you can see that it, it references things like optimized model. What does that mean? It's optimized to that particular chip, or is it for, uh, in this case, it's the NVIDIA chip. But it can, in a general sense, you need some optimization for the type of chip, that if it's an Apple chip, or if it's a NPU, or whatever it is, right? How can you make it um, work with that? Um, so that's the next stage. And go ahead, Rajni. Let me ask you something. So for just for the non-technical folks like me, right? So so is this really changing architecture of the chip? Yes, the chip is faster, better, more expensive, all that fun stuff. But is it now getting built for a very specific functionality? So it is still uh, LLM or uh, models independent. But it, but it's building an architecture that makes it faster and respond better. What is the output of this microservices? Right, the microservices. Imagine yeah, imagine that there is components getting built to run inside the microservice, right? So uh, it's offered as a service, but still, um, how do I put it? Like there's variety of pieces of the puzzle that make that microservice happen. How do they all work together as a single unit to render that service? In a in an optimized and a scalable way, right? So we have to start thinking about so some type of standardization. That's why they call it industry standard API. Right. So you got to standardize something because when you organically evolve something, uh, people focus on um, uh, the trees versus the forest, right? So it's kind of a tunnel view. Then once you get out of it, now you have to standardize certain things, and the chip maker has to standardize some some calls to make from the application layer. Things like that has to happen. And um, so in the traditional software development, that's what we do, right? We do a POC, yes. validate the functionality. Once it's validated, now you have to optimize, make sure that it runs the best way possible. Then it becomes a, a, a business, right? So so you would, the better for me to explain it, so it's almost like a vertical integration. There is a hardware upgrade that's happening, better, faster, stronger, but they're also building a, infrastructure or application or supporting an application layer the uh, nvidia is building some software to make that all work and they're hoping to make that more standard is that a good way to summarize that's one way and one of the things um the ceo says is it's a pla it's not a gpu it's a platform there's a key message there right so they want oh, okay. they, they don't want to be the chip anymore right they want to extend themselves into the platform game right so you can't extend into the platform game because without doing all of this kind of stuff, right? So that's one one view uh, how this is, how, how you can view this, right? If you think of it as a chip, yeah, you don't need to do all of this. You just need to expose a yeah. standard, right? But now that they are doing this, they want to become something more than a chip, right? It's a platform. It's a, it's they a want to be the uh, platform of choice, which means now they are 
plugged in for multiple decades instead of having to keep up with just a chip upgrade uh, game, right? So that's you. That's you, you got you got that. I think that's it. I think it's more towards platform of choice for the bigger enterprise. I don't know whether this uh, maybe they'll get to the small guys at some point, but I think the, it's more appealing towards. I am your platform of choice for the big money, right? For a small guy, that could be the forty thousand is all the profit they'll be making for what chip. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So uh, the next graph, I mean, maybe the text is not very clear because of the quality of the image I have, but you get the picture, right? These these um, units are your inference modules, right? Now you can think of these tiny microservices uh, spread out among different functionality. Uh, either it's for vector database, embedding, lookups, or whatever, or you are doing something with the structure data, knowledge graph, um, and there's agents. We heard this again and again, right? There's a bunch of agents that go do the job for you. Um, the plan module is interesting, I thought, because we know we came across this when we did the auto GPT, right? It did. Yeah. It, it it would ex create a plan. It'll execute a plan, but the plan is not the same every time it executes. It's like, it, it's almost like you had to ask, what's the plan this time? Um, so this is a very key piece. I don't know how this is going to get implemented, but um, you can see how this is all evolving into a prompt coming in. A plan gets created, gets distributed out to a bunch of agents to get the job done and aggregated and responded back. Um, and the last one is the is the realization of your digital twin type of thing. It just has a face in it, but it, it's the same thing, right? So you, you can visualize, okay, now you're talking to something that you can relate to. That you are, I know you're very passionate about this. We talked about this uh, bots and loneliness pandemic and one side psychological attention. All kind of variety of things can happen when you put a face to this thing, right? So that's, that's pretty be, much uh, it. Changing into a Chinese woman at some point. I, I love it. So, so that I like this because you know, we've been playing around for a year, right? So we know some of the issues with. Um, just a general theory of oh, auto agents can move uh, mountains and uh, you know create a, put you out of a job, but the reality is not there. Yes, can it do some work? Yes, it's a but vision. Yeah, the same set of work is not. It was the biggest delta that we found. If you give, if it's a one-time thing, it does it. We move away. That's great. But if you have to repeat the same and expect the same results, it was not happening. If you can get to a point where that happens. With a par more powerful uh, architecture, more powerful LLM, boy, we be in trouble as far as the just going to be so much opportunities on one side, right? But the other side, uh, we can talk a little bit more about it in the next segment. But there's there's a there is going to be good and bad coming out of it. So I'm excited about it. Yeah, I, I very, very true. Yeah.